Hey, how's it going? It's Keith Thousand, principal of the CTO Advisor. You are joining the CTO Advisor Road Trip in Seattle. We're talking about data in the public cloud and this idea of, I think, solving a gap that's been in the industry, specifically in the AWS product offering when it comes to managing data that was on premises that now needs to be placed in the public cloud. And, and taking advantage of many of the public cloud services that AWS has. This video is sponsored by NetApp. We have with us Nick, Nick Howe from NetApp, Adrian DeLuca from AWS. Guys, welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you. you, Keith. Nice to be here. All right, Nick, we're going to start with you first. Okay. Uh, I'm going to ask the obvious question. Why build this? Like, what, what, what is the problem? As we've been building the cloud portfolio at NetApp for a few years now, one of the things that we found is that our, our beloved install base has had problems with data gravity. They, they find it, they love AWS, they love working in AWS, but the enterprise applications, multi-tier apps that they want to take up there also come with a very big anchor called data. <laughs> those can oftentimes be hundreds of terabytes, if not petabytes in size, and it's hard to move that around just to say you want to do some QA on it real quick and then shut it all down, right? So the idea is to put ONTAP in the place where they want to work and leverage all of the efficiencies that come with using ONTAP in a native experience. So I, w I want to hit Adrian on this c concept of native. I know all of the native AWS storage services. How does this fit in that portfolio of services? Well, it's not just a, you know, a, a managed uh, experience of NetApp on tap on cloud. It is a fully integrated experience as well. So what that means is that you're benefiting from the full gamut, the entire portfolio of data protection services, data management services that come with NetApp and utilizing the AWS underlying infrastructure. So it's using the AWS compute networking and storage services. It's leveraging also um, all of the security uh, and management that you know, a lot of our customers know and love. So I'm just going to throw like some, I know enough about the AWS architecture to be dangerous. So I can assign an IM role to this service or integrate this service into my IM roles. Absolutely, so when it comes to the governance and control and the granularity that you would get with any other AWS service, you get the same with NetApp. I think it's really important to make it clear that this is running in your customer or our customer's VPC environment. So you get the benefits of using things like CloudTrail and CloudWatch uh, the same way that you would in any other service. You use key management service for encryption, for example. So it is really that complete integrated experience. Oh, oh wait, hold on, Nick, I had it. This is a new one to me. Okay. So I, I understand key management service. One is actually one of the most under, if there's an undersold service, key management service, the ability to manage my keys. So I can encrypt data on my ONTAP provided NFS stores using my AWS KMS keys. I don't need to add any more, you just nailed it. Okay, I think I'm starting to get this. With that said, let's talk about some practicals because I think there's going to be a lot of naysayers out here. First off, Nick, if I'm a traditional ONTAP administrator and I'm thinking cloud native APIs, all this stuff that I just don't know yet. I, my, my task is replicating data from site A to site B. I go into my ONTAP GUI. I know how to use it, I do it. Is that experience still there? Yes. For the ONTAP administrators, it is going to be a very similar experience, say, to you accessing a secondary array that might be living in your secondary data center look at AWS or the instance of FSx for NetApp on tap is going to be the same kind of experience you manage it with your tools that you're used to or you can directly access it from the AWS CLI or console all right what if I want to replicate data as I'm doing my data migration I want to replicate data from my private data center to the public cloud absolutely snap mirror fully supported uh, many of our flex and snap words that our install base know and love are all supported uh, you're going to see the, the ability to do fan out and uh, cascade configurations for snap mirror are all supported so if you wanted to land it in fsx for netapp on tap and then maybe cascade it out to a 
bunker site for whatever reason. All of those configuration options that we've been doing for decades on NetApp arrays are still available. Uh, and that's really the way for infrastructure architects to look at FSX for NetApp ONTAP is it's an extension of your NetApp infrastructure. So as I take off my Keith Towns in 30, through three, I would just say 30, three decades of yeah. enterprise IT experience. So you, you know, that's how I would, I would naturally want to do that, Adrian. Yeah. However, there's a new generation of folks out there doing things via these tools that allow them to do things at scale. If I wanted to run on tap in one AWS region, one tap in another AWS region, and use this native capability, do I then have to kind of exit my world that I know in order to perform that simple task? Well, Keith, I've got the privilege of working literally with hundreds but of customers that are doing this migration. They're bringing their traditional applications into the cloud, they're all in. Um, but we've done this thousands of times. And, and what we continue to see, if you want to get not just the cost benefits and the efficiency benefits of the clouds, you've got to get the productivity benefits. And how a lot of customers are realizing this today, whether you come from the old world or the new world, is you bind that together through automation, infrastructure as code. So the, the fact that you can take the service that you know and love, uh, or this uh, the, the operating system and all its features and capabilities and embed that as infrastructure as code in a cloud formation script uh, or a Terraform script means that you're bringing all of the same sort of benefits to those traditional environments as you would for your modern applications. So let's test this all the way to the modern application, the traditional cloud native application in the cloud native container Kubernetes based sense. If I want to provision and attach a Per persistent storage volume to a pod, is that supported in this solution? Either one of you guys can take that. 100%. I mean, we could just high five across from each other. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and just simply go that. No, to, to get into more of the details, uh, we've had the Trident plugin, the open source plugin, uh, is now completely conformant with the CSI spec from the Kubernetes uh, world. So all of that still works in any form of ONTAP, whether it's FSX for NetApp ONTAP or whether it's a physical array you have on-prem. Trident, it's irrelevant to Trident, if I'm being frank. So at the end of the day, yes, we can provision CSI PVCs. Those can come either from infrastructure as code, such as cloud formation templates, Hell, you, if you've got some YAML, you can throw that in there, right? That <laughs> my old, my favorite, old, my old favorite YAML. word. Uh, so you could totally do that. Uh, at the end of the day, though, we're going to see a lot of people begin to move data sets from on-prem up to the cloud as a first step, and then they're going to discover how they can take advantage of either native NetApp or native AWS services or some of the other features and functionality that ONTAP brings to the table that they may not have known about before. And that's right, Nick. I mean, uh, the benefit of it being a native. Uh, service in the AWS uh, environment means yeah. that you can connect it to EC2, you can, contain, you can connect it to the container services, uh, and you can even expose those uh, multi-protocol uh, shares to uh, Amazon Workspaces or AppStream. So it really is uh, you know, uh, an environment that is completely bound together. So if I'm moving, if I'm migrating to my VDI and I have this used data set, I have workspaces for my VDI that connects to ONTAP, so I'm using this in this traditional way, and as I start to migrate my applications and replatform my applications, the data's there, and I can just cycle the services around that data. And identity management, right? So if you're running Active Directory for, uh, for your users, uh, you can literally join those Active Directory domains uh, natively inside the environment. Well, I told you, I know enough about AWS to be dangerous, but I'm sure I've missed some basic questions that you'd like to know more about. If you want to know more, first spot is to go down and click the link associated with this video. If you want to learn more about the CTO Advisor, you can follow us on the web, thectoadvisor.com forward slash road dash trip to learn about where we've gone and where we'll be if you haven't followed the road trip. If you have feedback directly for me, there's questions you want me to ask these two. You want me to email them and say, hey, you know what? Sarah from Chicago had a really interesting question. You can DM me on Twitter at CTO Advisor. DMs are open. Talk to you next CTO Dose.